the Change and Grow Wellness Show, the show for you, the busy professional who wants to live a healthy, happier life with increased energy and productivity. And I'm Jackie Grant, I'm your host, I'm your hormone health and fitness coach, and I help women to balance their hormones, change their habits, and feel better in their body again. Today, we are talking about confidence, energy, and glow. And we have Emma Dawson, who's a nutritional expert and female intimate health and anxiety, and works with women around female intimate health, anxiety, and trauma. Welcome, Emma. Hi, thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Good, good, good. So Emma, let's start off with you telling me what is your mission? Well, my mission is working with women who suffer from anxiety, who've got low confidence, low self-esteem, maybe mm. have um, hormonal imbalances, so they're kind of going up and down in their moods throughout their cycle, or maybe they're perimenopause or menopausal, and then it's all got a lot more intense. Mm. Um, they might have low self, um, low sex drive. They might have painful sex. They might have, um, so I work with women with endometriosis when the endometrial tissue grows in other places, mm. which causes lots and lots of pain. Um, and I work with women with polycystic AV syndrome when they're producing more testosterone, less estrogen, um, and then they have lots of different um, detrimental effects as a result of that. Um, but my mission really is, I personally suffered from trauma and PTSD in my twenties, mm. you know, quite full on way when I was, when I was in London. Um, and I'm really particularly focused on supporting any woman who suffered from trauma um, to come through that. Brilliant. Good. So Emma, tell me um, what, I mean, you just kind of answered my second question. I just realized. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Okay, so you started your you, you started your journey from from um in terms of the fact that you had a trauma. Tell us a bit more about that. Oh, so I used to so I lived in London for a long time, uh, moved there when I was 18, left when I was 34, absolutely loved it. Mm. Um in my mid-20s, I and I kind of worked, so I, I was working looking after groups of vulnerable people. So I worked with homeless people, uh, women and kids fleeing domestic abuse, um, kind of different types of vulnerable groups mm. of people, which I loved doing. Mm. Um and then in my mid-twenties, I was the victim of a really nasty assault. Mm. Um, don't have any memory of it. Um, was in hospital for quite a while mm. and then suffered from a lot of um, PTSD, although then in the 90s, it wasn't actually known. No. It's, mm. It wasn't. Um, and I didn't really get any of that type of support. And I think I was massively impacted by stress. Mm. And my hormones, like from a physical point of view my hormones were massively affected mm. um and i of course i went out and i was a bit of a determined to get through it all so mm. i tended to go out and i drank a lot i partied mm. a lot worked really hard partied hard mm. and tried to work out for myself what had happened mm. um so then i kind of moved to bristol my um mid-30s and I really wanted to f study nutrition mm. so I could look at how I could support um, women like that, bringing the kind of science into it, mm. the nutrition into it, mm. as well as the kind of emotional stuff. Mm. Um, so that's what I've done. And I've been qualified and working for the last six and a half years. Um, and I work with people online mostly now. That's um great. yeah that's great that's great emma so it's a it's been a bit of a transition in like you working with vulnerable adults to then working in this field so that's amazing so emma i'm really really interested in your work around pms and pmbd so tell us a bit about the difference between it Start. Be between PMS and PMDD. So PMDD yeah. um, is when you get kind of acute depression and anxiety 
before your period mm. so it'll be when that happens it'll depend on the woman because we all have different cycles mm. um, and our estrogen levels increase at certain times progesterone levels kind of increase decrease mm. at certain times and those two hormones have a relationship with each other mm. so if you've got too much of the estrogen mm. then that kind of gives you much more anxiety mm. much more at risk of anxiety and depression mm. um and pmdd is a massive increase of of um of that before mm. periods mm. so it won't the woman won't experience that the whole of the time it will yeah. be in in that period mm, mm. um and then there's lots of things that you can do nutritionally and mm. exercise wise and, mm. um and lifestyle wise to kind of to manage that and to support that to go away mm. okay so tell us a little bit about that because i'm really interested in pmdd and um what what would you say i mean nutritionally i, I suspect it'd be a lot of the same things but there might be some different things that you might be able to tell me um well i suppose it depends what you know but um <laughs> <laughs> I, don't. I mean so so basically with any hormonal imbalance um you have to obviously start with food and it's all of the stuff that everyone will know mm. um but maybe don't actually realize the significance of it so kind of green leafy vegetables broccoli um and the other vegetables linked to broccoli like brussels sprouts are mm. um massively important at supporting the processing of estrogen mm. um and you can like if so if somebody has extreme issues then i would either recommend because obviously you can't eat like 500 grams of broccoli a day no. um <laughs> Although I've, I, I do know some people, but um, you can get <laughs> broccoli, sp sprouting broccoli yeah. and, and kind of and then kind of make it into, you know, kind of grow it with some water on the windowsill is all you yeah. need. Um, and then you can kind of stick it into kind of into drinks mm. um, and then really focus on doing that kind of thing in the run up to when you know you start feeling bad. Mm. Um and then sugary food, so the kind of basic stuff, so eating high processed sugary foods is going to impact on yeah. your stress levels, it's going to impact on your hormones, mm. um, so you really want to balance and you really want to focus on that in that kind of second part of your cycle, mm. um, ditto booze um, too and probably lots of caffeine because mm. coffee is going to stimulate your cortisol your stress mm. hormones mm. um so it's all the kind of basic stuff but often when i work with somebody they won't even be they won't be doing that yeah exactly they'll want exactly. a pill to yeah. make it yeah. better yeah 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 and talking about a, a pill what what do doctors normally um give clients that have pmdd well so they might use um hormonal um contraceptives uh for them and then they might use um so maybe progesterone or mm. they might use um antidepressants mm. um mm. and then there's of course there's a whole heap of different types of antidepressants exactly. um now um and what i'm always really sad about is b vitamins are really important for our mood yes um maybe they should just start off with some b vitamins mm. um, because mm. there's no issue there's no side effects of taking b vitamins um but of course there's heaps of different side effects of taking antidepressants exactly. um and heaps of side effects of, of, of taking um hormonal contraceptives mm. and for anybody listening mm. who uses hormonal contraceptives um be aware that you will have less B vitamins in mm. your system mm. because you'll be using them to process those hormones mm. that doesn't mean I'm saying you shouldn't you shouldn't use them of course mm. um but just be aware that you might have a you know additional need mm. for, for for kind of nutrient support mm. definitely definitely thank you Emma you know those are some of the things that I do know but obviously there was some key things that you kind of said in terms of like doing sprouting, you know, 
that's that's really really good you know so because someone can can just do that and start to put it in the smoothies and pull it into different things that they um actually eat but also having a knowledge around the vitamins and how contraception can you know impact on people's able to have enough in their body to help them you know with their mood so that's really important thank you so how do you help women to um get more confidence get more energy and get that glow oh so i will i start off with food um i do a big assessment of with them they fill out some questionnaires because i work functionally so i try and see mm. what is the underlying cause or mm. causes because there's usually more than one thing mm. of that kind of imbalance mm. um stress high levels of cortisol which is the main stress hormone mm. will be key for dealing with anxiety mm. um, and depression and um kind of impacting on confidence and glow and energy mm. Mm. Um, and, and often i work with women and they say or they think well my i'm my I'm, my stress levels are fine mm. um but I do sometimes use some stress. There are some uh, some tests that you can do to look at cortisol levels, oh, yeah. and often they either have very very high levels mm. of cortisol, which was going to be impacting on their sex hormones, mm. and their lovely hormone called GABA, which is the hormone that we produce to feel nice and chill mm. and relaxed. Mm. um so that can be a really good test to do to to then look, look at what we need to do to support mm. them mm. Um, and that might be balancing their sugar levels it might be looking at lifestyle mm. um, and exercise so as well if somebody's doing a lot of cardio bringing in the kind of yoga and mm. breathing um mm. stuff too mm. obviously if you're living in um, a big city like london smaller city like bristol um, <laughs> people are going to be commuting yeah so well actually i'm saying that um people won't be commuting so much now in COVID, yeah. time, which is good you yeah. know um but looking at how they can manage that and i guess mm. the other big thing which isn't nutrition which i haven't mentioned is social media um yeah. and in internet so kind of keeping um, a lid on how much you do it mm. um, and having time outside in the fresh air mm. um, as fresh as the air is in Bristol and London <laughs> to kind of to, to kind of to breathe um, yeah. yeah so so it, de it, it depends on the person I'm working with definitely very very much so mm. um, and if they're if I think that they've got low levels of different nutrients like zinc is really important nutrient mm. for, for anxiety or anti-anxiety. Um, and lots of people have low levels of zinc. Mm. Um, it's used up a lot in stress. If you've got gut problems, um, then zinc's one of the first things you're going to find difficult to absorb. Mm. Um, so with that, I would always look at supporting somebody's gut health because mm. if their guts aren't doing what they should be doing doesn't really matter in some ways what they're eating or certainly not what supplements they're yeah. taking it's it's not going to work yeah exactly so but what what do you do with someone around their gut microbiome um so i might use stool tests to see exactly what's going on mm. um i would obviously increase their um kind of vegetables um small amounts of fruit mm. extra virgin olive oil mm. i know that there was um, some research that came out a few years ago and people were like oh no we can't cook with olive oil and we've got oh, yeah. Yeah. um actually the latest research has said no extra virgin olive oil is amazing um and it is one of the best things to cook with mm. obviously not if you're kind of high you know kind of frying some chips or something yeah, yeah. um but they're not really that good for you anyway <laughs> <laughs> but they're a treat meal yeah. um but it's really good for the gut so the gut bacteria like extra virgin olive oil mm. and they like avocado and avocado yeah. oil they don't like coconut oil so much and they oh. definitely don't like any of the kind of sunflower oils oh, yeah. uh, vegetable oils um that 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 kind of stuff 
um, and they love they love um, skin of like nuts and seeds mm. and berries. Mm. Um, they love flax seeds, mm. and flax seeds are really good for female hormonal balance. Yes. So I use them a lot, and they're also good if somebody's having trouble pooing. Mm. Um, and constipation is quite a big thing for mm. people especially if they're stressed. Yeah, um, definitely. So the basic stuff I'd start with would be the kind of nuts and seeds, um, berries, mm. good fat, yeah. lean protein, mm -hmm. um, whether that's um, the kind of oily fish like salmon and chicken or whether it's looking at the kind of vegan options. Um, I wouldn't, if somebody had gut problems, I wouldn't want them to be eating heaps and heaps and heaps of beans to start off with because they're quite trickier to um, to digest and absorb, mm -hmm. um, but also very, very good for the gut too. Mm -hmm. um, so there's heaps of different things. I might mm -hmm. use um, digestive enzymes with somebody if they were having problems or yeah. bitters. So in terms of like food, um, we used to eat food that was a lot bitterer um, and yeah. now we because everyone's taste buds are so much sweeter mm. we grow sweeter versions of the fruit and the veg and we kind of if something tastes bitter we kind of think it's bad for yeah, us yeah. but actually bitter tastes really good for the gut mm. Mm. and for the glow mm. um, because it kind of stimulates our digestive juices mm. um so it's kind of like a natural way of stimulating our gut mm. and our liver and our detox um so in terms of bitter bitter things to include artichoke um is um so i use it in a tea a lot with people but it's mm. super bitter but mm. even things like extra dark chocolate mm. little bits of extra dark chocolate mm. or cacao beans taste taste kind of bitter yeah they do um <laughs> some berries like red currants black currants um bitter melon mm. um rocket leaves um and also which is in terms of hormonal balance and gut, rosemary is really good, and even dried rosemary. Mm. So don't think that dried herbs um, don't have any impact on mm. our health because they can be massively supportive. Um, and rosemary is a, is a good one uh, for hormonal balance. Brilliant, great, Emma. So Emma, what if if someone was listening right now? What would you say as the first steps that they should take in, in order for them to start to begin to get that confidence, energy and glow? Well, I think look at, think about their blood sugar levels to start off with. So, which sounds a bit technical, mm. but if they're somebody who has energy ups and downs in the day and mood ups and downs in the day, it's probable that they're eating food that's increasing their sugar levels mm. too much and then they'll be coming crashing down. Okay. Cause if we've mm. got sugar, too much sugar in our bloodstream, mm. um, and that could be for me in a couple of bananas. It doesn't have to be from eating mm. like a big bar of milk chocolate. Mm. Um, it could be from having lots of strong coffee mm. um, on its own. Um, it could be just because you're feeling really stressed mm. and you haven't eaten anything. Yeah. So three balanced meals um, of the day with protein, uh, lots of veg mm. um, and whole grains. If you're eating grains, so not the white pasta and the white yeah. rice, going for the brown versions um, or quinoa or or black beans what, mm. whatever it is I, I would start with that mm. um, and then if somebody feels that they already do that mm. um, then I would think about gut um, health so mm. thinking about the bitters thinking about um, supporting your digestion mm. um, and even before food comes into it how we're eating yeah how many of us eat as and work at the same time yeah how many of us spend ages planning their dinner and then they've eaten it in two minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit more mindful eating yeah 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 
definitely. Brilliant, Emma, thank you. So Emma, have you got any final words for our audience today? Um, final words for the audience. Just take, think about what I've said today and make one action for yourself. However amazingly healthy or absolutely uh, full of anxiety you feel wherever you are on the spectrum there is always one thing that you can do mm. um, to support yourself and if you're um, maybe in your 30s or 40s um, anything that you can do to support yourself before you get into that perimenopausal time is good because you mm. don't want to go into perimenopause and menopause all over the place yeah um yeah definitely Definitely. Thank you, Emma. So where can people find you, Emma? So I've got my website is nutritionalbalance.co.uk. Mm -hmm. um, and then my Facebook page, Emma Dawson Nutrition. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn as well as Emma Dawson Nutrition. Brilliant. Too. Thank you, Emma. So that was really, really insightful. A lot of information for people to take away in, in terms of, you know, things that they can do so that they can start to build in new habits and actually think about not just what you eat, but how you eat. So thank you very much. Oh, it's been a pleasure. That's, that's great. It was great to have you on, my dear. Um, that's it, guys, for the show today. And I look forward to seeing you soon so when we'll start to talk about something else even more just as good as what Emma's talking about today but even more solutions for you to start to build in healthy habits.